Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation with complex numbers. So we have z squared equals the absolute value of z plus 1 and we're going to be solving for z values. So let's go ahead and start by setting z equal to A plus BI. That's the standard form for a complex number. Now, one of the questions that I want to pose is, can z be real? Something to think about, right? All right, I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to use this equality, z equals a plus bi, and set z equal to that everywhere. So the absolute value is going to be square root of a squared plus b squared. But remember, this is z plus 1. So we're going to add 1 and then take the absolute value. So this is going to be squared. And then on the right-hand side, we're supposed to take the absolute value of a plus bi plus 1, which is z plus 1. And then if you put it in kind of standard form, it's going to be a plus 1 plus bi. And how do you take the absolute value of a plus 1 plus bi? Let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's go ahead and square this first, a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. Remember how we square a plus bi. And then this will be the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared and then square root of that sum. Okay? So here's the equation that we get from here. This equation is actually going to give us very interesting results, by the way. That's why I wanted to share with you two methods. So here's what we're going to do. We have a complex number with the real part and imaginary part on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, we only have the real part. So what is going on? So it just means that we don't have an imaginary part on the right-hand side, therefore we need to set this equal to zero. This is the most critical part. This gives us the following, of course. This is the real part and that's the real part. So they're supposed to equal. Let's go ahead and set up a system. A squared minus B squared is equal to the square root of a plus 1 squared plus b squared. So after setting these equal to each other, of course, we also have the 2ab equals 0, which means ab equals 0. Now, this is a good one because uh, ab equals 0 basically impl implies two things. Either a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. So we're going to look at each case separately. Let's go ahead and start with a equals 0 first. Now, if a is equal to 0, from the first equation, let's call this first and let's call this one second, we're going to get negative b squared is equal to the square root of b squared plus 1. Great. So does this make sense at all? Well, negative b squared cannot be positive, and the square root of b squared plus 1 needs to be positive. So this is not going to give us any real solutions because negative b squared is always less than or equal to 0, right? Which can't happen with a radical because, remember, b is real. Or you can also square both sides and write this as b to the fourth power equals b squared plus 1. And if you try to solve this equation as follows, let's go ahead and write it down this way. And then set b squared equal to c. And you get c squared minus c minus 1 equals 0. Now, from here, you get two solutions by using the quadratic formula. 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. And this is supposed to equal b squared. Obviously, b squared is greater than or equal to 0, right? If b squared is greater than or equal to 0, this means b squared must be 1 plus root 5 over 2 because 1 minus root 5 over 2 is negative, right? Okay, cool. Now, what do you do with that? Well, if you set b squared equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2, then you kind of need to uh, consider this, square root of b squared plus 1, which is what we had here. And that's going to be the opposite of this number, which is negative 1 minus root 5 over 2. But that's not going to happen, right? Because uh, there's no real value that satisfies this. So we're going to have to uh, forget about a equals 0. That's not going to work. So now we're going to proceed with b equals 0. OK, let's see what happens. If b is equal to 0, go ahead and replace b with 0 here. Then you're going to get something uh, simpler. That's going to be a squared equals the square root of a plus 1 squared. And then from here, you get something nice. Because the square root of a plus 1 squared is basically 
the absolute value of a plus 1, and this means you're going to have two branches. So here's what we're going to do. If a plus 1 is greater than 0, then this means a squared is equal to a plus 1, or a squared minus a minus 1 is equal to 0. And this gives us two values, a is equal to 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. Remember, for both of these cases, a plus 1 is going to be greater than 0. Why? Because if you think about it, even with the 1 minus root 5 over 2, if you add 1 to it, you're going to get 3 minus root 5 over 2, and that's definitely going to be greater than 0 because 3 is greater than root 5. Make sense? So both of these solutions are valid, good A values. Okay, what happens if A plus 1, on the other hand, is less than 0? Of course, it's going to give us a negative sign with the absolute value. And then when you put everything on the same side, we do get a quadratic equation that has no real solutions. But remember, A and B are supposed to be real. Where, where do they come from? Z equals A plus BI. Remember, that's the name of the channel as well. And A and B are always real. Okay? Therefore, this doesn't give us any solutions, which means those are the only values we found, 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So the second method is going to use the following. It's going to use a better idea, of course, which you probably already knew. Notice that the absolute value of a complex number is always real, right? So this is a real number, which means z squared is also real. So now, here's the big question, million dollar question. If z squared is real, does that mean z is also real? Is this always true? And the answer is no. It's not always true because, think about it, i squared is real, but i is not real, right? So it's not always true. But there is something interesting about this, which you're going to see in a little bit. Yes, z, this is not implied, but z can be real, uh, absolutely, right? Or imaginary. It can't be something like an a plus bi where a and b are different from 0. So, if z is real, let's go ahead and take a look at two cases here, okay? If z is real, then this implies that z squared equals absolute value of z plus 1, and we're going to take the absolute value with the absolute value meaning in the real sense, which means this means either z squared is z plus 1, or z squared is equal to negative z minus 1 right? If z is real, one of these must be true. But if you think about it, this gives you z squared minus z minus 1 equals 0. Again, that comes with the same solutions as before, 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. And if you look at this equation, z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0, then this equation has no real solutions. But z is supposed to be real, therefore we don't get anything from there. The only solutions we get are going to be 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. Make sense? Okay, great. Now, what happens if z is imaginary, right? If z is imaginary, which means it's going to be like a equals 0 but bi. So, set z equal to bi, then bi squared is going to be the same thing as 1 plus absolute value of 1 plus bi. Now, this implies, again, negative b squared is equal to square root of 1 plus b squared brings us to the same equation which doesn't have any real solution. So here's what happens. If z is imaginary, then z squared is less than 0, but the absolute value of z plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. They're not going to be equal. Therefore, as a conclusion, we can safely say that z is either 1 plus root 5 over 2 or 1 minus root 5 over 2. Again, two numbers with golden flavor. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.